Hello, and in this video, I want to discuss the concept that maybe do uh, Ezekiel did Ezekiel actually prophesy uh, against or warning against Russia? Because everybody is is claiming that Russia is in the Bible, okay, as a final warning to mankind. Russia is the demonic forces that will attack the peaceful people of God. Did you hear that term? Will attack the peaceful people of God. Who are the peaceful people of God? Who loves God in the West that Russia should if they are mentioned in Ezekiel prophecy, should see fit that they're going to wage war against the church. The church already is at war. Who is making war against the church? The government in the West with the liberal agenda, where you cannot even say that a man is born a man or a woman is born a woman. If you dare to say that, you will go to prison for your faith. So there is war already against the church. There is war already against the Christian beliefs, against the Bible. So we have to re-examine those texts. Certainly, Russia could not be waging war against the West because they are people of God. When surveys show there are more atheists more people who are pagans living in the West than there are Christians. More people identify themselves as witches, as pagans, devil worshippers. Many people identify themselves as atheists, as Gnostics. Hardly painting a picture of a people who love God. Who loves Jesus Christ quite the opposite so how then can Russia be mentioned in Ezekiel it's impossible however one thing we do know whenever we have quote-unquote a common enemy it's natural that we are going to put the puzzle together and pretend that this picture, this narrative, fits what we want. Remember, Ronald Reagan was called the Antichrist. President Bush was called the Antichrist. Tony Blair was labeled, you know, having the mark of the beast, etc. So people who we don't like from history, we tend to fit the Bible accordingly to our prejudices and our fears. And usually, it, you know, the, the logic has no basis for scientific scrutiny or even historical, you know, accurate translation, but merely from phobia and fears and irrationalities. Hence why we can say that Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist, President Bush, Obama, was the Antichrist. Everybody we don't like is the Antichrist. But worse of all is when you have so-called biblical scholars who are claiming that Russia is mentioned in Ezekiel. Not Muslims, not Islam, not Iranian, not any other countries, but Russia. And obviously with what happened, I think it was 1980s when the world could have yeah, what they call it, the, the Cuban war crisis, the world came close to a catastrophe purely because when we have nuclear weapons, you, you know, which can wipe out man, the country that has the most nuclear weapons or poses to be a threat, immediately we begin to look at things from a biblical prophetic, you, you know, angle because our civilization is at threat. So we're going to fear those who we see as a potential threat. And 
use the Bible to justify, ah, this Bible, this verse mentions Russia. It mentions England. It mentions Ireland. Okay? If some people even said it mentioned the Vatican, the Catholic Church, the seven Adventists believe that the Catholic Church is going to wage war against the remnant seven Adventists. So everybody uses apocalyptic text in, in order to please their own phobias or fears or irrationalities. Whereas Magog and Gog was actually a person, I think it was a prince of Meshnet or something, when God says, I set my face against Gog and Magog, his enemies. It was actually a person. But somehow this person has become a city, a country, a world. This is what happens when you resort to conspiracy theories, when you listen to people who have an ulterior motive. I'm not about oh, they've fallen here. Who have ulterior motives. You start to listen to their nonsense rather than looking at historical records and ask yourself the question, who is Magog? What is it? And what is the relationship? Is it regarding Ezekiel prophecy? When you do that, you don't see Russia because at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, when we look at end times, prophecy, etc., and, and the war between good and evil, it's between heaven, you know, and hell. It's between light and darkness. It has nothing to do with human beings exterminating a set of another human beings because they claim that one human being is evil. In the eyes of God, we are all evil. To claim that, well, you know, because a, a country is not a capitalist country, do, do, do not believe in free market, so they must be the Antichrist because they don't believe in a free market. Free market enterprise. They haven't got Margaret Thatcher's philosophy, Reagan philosophy, then they must be the Antichrist. You begin to realize that we're trading on dangerous grounds here. We're trading on dangerous grounds. We're using economic philosophy as a weapon in which to label and demonize individuals or countries because they don't fit our economic narrative. You know, some of these people who are using these arguments are not even Christians. These people just happen to be economists, they're capitalists or whatever. They follow a certain political agenda. And you threaten they money science belief oh you see ezekiel we are told they are gog and magog whipping you up and your brain becomes fried your eyes go dizzy and you think oh my god these people must be the enemy not realizing that at the end of the day we are all who are outside the covenant we are all enemies of god whether we like it or not God's not going to pick sides and says, oh, you know something? The African nation, because they happen to be, quote, unquote, a Christian country, believe in family values, and they, they don't hardly have any LGBTQ agenda. Therefore, the African country should wage war against Magon, which is, which is Europe. You can twist things the, the way you want. You can twist it. But sadly, a lot of us, we fall for this propaganda. You know, as I says, many people, when Obama came in power, these people weren't Christians, and they called him the Antichrist. Why? For the simple reason. They want to get there first, see who can brainwash you into, onto their way of thinking. These people don't even believe in the Bible. They don't even believe it. But you look on YouTube, just type up the word Antichrist and Rapture, and you know something? You got loads of people using those terms. They even quote in the Bible, they don't even believe in, in, in it. But they have an agenda. They're either Star Trek fans, they're into sci-fi, and that is it. But they pull what they need in order to either get paid, get monetized, or do the convenient brainwashing. There's one channel, I forgot what, what it's called. Pure rapture videos, pure rapture, not one gospel. Pure rapture, I said, something don't make sense. 
Something don't make sense that you're obsessed with the rapture, yet not one, not one video on the gospel. I said, you know something? When you look at it, you begin to realize these people, their brains are somewhere. You know, their brains not quite right. You know, they're, they're, they're Trekkies, they're Star Trek fans, and they're looking for like-minded people. But it's a code that they use, a code. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. Same thing. Same thing. People are being attacked here, right? P people at the end of the day, they look at the Bible and they see certain texts and they think to themselves, ah, I'm going to use this for my weapon, for my agenda. No, forget the truth. I'm not interested in the truth. I'm only interested in propagating my propaganda. You know, if, for instance, um, if, if Russia became you know, a capitalist country. I've no, you got millionaires in Russia, millionaires, right? You know, they, they got a free market, whether they like it or not. Um, and, and, and Iran became a capitalist country. Then who then becomes Magog? Who then becomes Gog? So we invent an enemy and we then ascribe those terms. You're, you're Gog, you're Magog, because you won't buy from me. You won't buy my oil. So therefore you're Magog and you're Gog. You begin to realize they're playing with the Bible. They really don't believe in it. It's just a way of insulting someone. You're Magog. You're Gog. You know, not realizing it's actually a person that God was addressing. But the problem is when, you, when your mind is fixed, when your mind is fixed, not on the truth, but political agendas, then you're so easily going to be deceived. When your mind is fixed, you know, on political agendas, then you're going to be the, the, the leftist. I'm, I'm sure that they can, you know, just as do a good job and look at Ezekiel and they too can twist it for their own agenda. The liberals, they quote from Jesus, the liberals. Oh, if you, if you love me, if the Jesus was love, tolerate everything, no matter what, how perverse. Jesus was love. If you love Jesus, you, you will tolerate everything. You see, where you're going, the route you're going down on is dangerous. And that's why we are told we must make sure we are foundation and solid in the word. We must make sure we read it for ourselves and forget those who have a political agenda. Because a lot of them has infiltrated the church, infiltrated. I was talking to my sister, my blood sister, I was talking to her yesterday, right, um, regarding this, uh, how many unsavory individuals has, what's his name, Alex Jones, infiltrated the church. It wouldn't surprise me if David Icke, you know, that conspiracy theory, we believe everybody's reptiles and queen's reptiles. It wouldn't surprise me if he turned his fiat philosophy and infiltrated the church because the church has no foundation so anybody can come in and bring us strange philosophies strange connections and we end up believing it why we won't read the bible for ourselves and understand it i hope you enjoyed this video i'm being bitten out here left right and center but i'm going to make a lot more in this area because we are moving towards last day's deception and we've got to stop name calling and and start spreading the gospel you know stop tail bearing and you and using the bible out of context because this is what it really is just look up the history of magog and gog and you will see that you've been lied to by usually warmongers people have an agenda in the end, all of us are, are outside, you know, um, all of us are condemned, all of us are wicked when it comes down to it, right? The Bible was referring to someone who did wrong, Gog and Magog, not a, a specific country. This moves towards xenophobia. And we see what happened in history when you start using the Bible for xenophobic, you know, beliefs. We've got to be careful. I hope you enjoyed this video.